more and more into phones, is it reasonable to think that we'll need the servers a bit more if we use more phones? Because we need. Um, I I I would say that's fifty fifty because if you look at some of the ARM chips that are coming out for mobile devices, I mean they're starting to get into the two gigahertz range and they're getting to be two to four core. So at it may not be. Uh, I mean, really, they need more RAM more than they need more processing power at this point. But I mean, they need communication. So routers, for example, is one of the things you might need farms for. Uh, so for routing of communications and chatting requests and stuff like that, uh, in very dense areas where you use phones and maybe even uh, in the case of Android, uh, I'm not sure they still actually experiment with that. I think the Nexus was the first one they tried this on. They did the voice recognition thing, and I think what they did is he would speak, it would go to a server remotely, like a phone, and then they would uh, basically try and transcribe your speech and issue the command or, you know, give the text that you, give the text of what you just said, because the uh, phone didn't have sufficiently strong hardware to do it in a uh, nowhere close to real time. Uh, so, but basically the whole thing, the whole thing, basically a phone is very easy to communicate with, either over a uh, cellular network or over something like Wi-Fi and IP, uh, the normal IP thing. So, so a phone is already very well, uh, very performed very well with communicating with servers in a very rapid way, good response time, because you have to like you do speech in real time, almost in real time, uh, when you speak to a person, so you can get the inputs and you know check boxes and everything kind of to um, to be very responsive. I mean, I'm, I'm, to, to just to just try and explain what I'm trying to say here is, if you compare the telephony lag to a, an internet-based lag, uh, you, you you'd expect the interfaces on a phone to work over the network maybe a bit better than on a uh, than on an IP-based environment. And I, I think that increasingly more and more people who want to work in documents and things will have to go through their phones and have to connect to some servers to do certain things online. So anyway, what I'm trying to get at is, is the fact that I, I think, based on sales too, you see servers going up and up and up and up in terms of demand, and I think the desktop is sort of flattening uh, for the first time in ages, and maybe some growth markets, places where you don't have any uh, desktops before, carry on selling some desktops. But the, the phones and the server side are, based on what I read, they're the ones growing now. And the and it's not just Apache running on servers for web services. It's now especially uh, Nginx from Russia, I believe. It's uh, it's just got like three I think three millions in funding. It's going it's going sort of open core, which means it goes proprietary. It will sell certain features at a at a price, and it will just be closed source code. Um, and uh, but it's pretty good news for anybody who wants some competition for Apache. Uh, and this one is kind of mostly open source, so again you see Microsoft... Oh, well, there's yeah. also a few open source competitors to Apache too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What about its Chinese one it's, that was doing pretty well for a while? Is this open source or is it, I think it's proprietary, isn't it? It's very proprietary. Yes. Right. It's, uh, I just read about, I'm just writing about some of the telecom companies in China and the, the, their connection to the secret services in the country. I know. Uh, I don't have to be. I think that's just a vision of what's to come here, I suppose. I, I, I'm surprised, actually, that Skype works as well with China as it does, but then there's the special version. <laughs> so yeah, I was going to say something about that. <laughs> you heard they've just removed a ban on, uh, they've just removed censorship on a very specific thing, but the headline, the way it was written down, it's like, this is now available for China. But the real story was it was censored before, but I cannot remember what it was. It was one of yeah. those... Uh, Oh, it was, yeah, it was Android Market. It was banned in China. I'm not sure why. It was actually banned. And they're like, Google Market, now available in China. Because the apps on the marketplace would not have gone through Chinese censorship and not have all the back doors. That, I mean, you are not, uh, when you, this version of Skype most people use in China has built-in monitoring. Um... Now, if you're using Linux and it's not the Chinese Linux and you know about you know getting around stuff, you can actually get an open, clean version of Skype in China. But then you can be labeled a troublemaker, a potential troublemaker. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. It's, it's, China has a oh, weird mentality on some of Oh, we heard you use Linux. It must mean you're a... Uh, yeah, so. 
Well, but there's an official Chinese version of Linux, actually. It just has all the modified packages. Yeah. <laughs> well, sticking on the, sticking on the censorship, um, I'm going to censor both of you. We're going to move on to just a very brief mention for Sabion 7. It got its release uh, in the last day or so. Um, it comes packed with the Linux kernel version 3, and uh, it also has, you have the choice of uh, GNOME 3.2, KDE 4.7, which interests me because I'm currently running 4.6.5, and I, I have got into KDE a little bit now, now that Roy managed to convince me. XFCE 4.8, and it's also shipping LibreOffice 3.4. Um, it's a rolling release distro. I've been uh, championing it for quite a long time now. I think it's a fantastic uh, distro, so uh, check that out if you get the opportunity to. And we'll move on to our final topic of the evening, which again is uh, led by Roy, and it's about Bristol. So, Roy, fill us in, right. please. This is one I've been wanting for a while. It's been a very interesting one because it's local. And it kind of affects me uh, professionally as well. So, so the story is Bristol was going to move into open source, and it was going to be quite a trailblazer and quite the uh, case study, uh, following what used to be in Birmingham like several years ago. Uh, okay, so, so let, let me just mention this very briefly. So, Birmingham was supposed to move to Linux uh, or explore Linux in government quite a few years back for cost savings, and they were like trying KDE and they issued some reports and so on and so forth. Long story short, Microsoft is said to have kind of offered them like a special bargain, basically one of those edgy deal, EDGI sort of thing, which stands in Microsoft for something like, uh, uh, it's something to do with uh, education and marketing, uh, government, something where they basically give you a big discount just to bury the competition. So if you offer Linux, Microsoft will come to you and give you like a lot of cash and say, oh, here, you know, have Windows free, and, and this is how they kill that. Now, in, in uh, what happened now in, in, uh, in Bristol, which is further down south, they basically offered a, uh, um, they basically, the stories it's unveiled now, based on an article a few days ago, one of the companies that it's very close to Microsoft, and one person told me they are like a, uh, the alter ego of Microsoft in the UK, or one of the alter egos that they have in the UK, was telling Bristol that Open source doesn't have this very specific name of specific of certification for security. So it's one of these old fads, you know, open source, how do you know it's secure and stuff. And of course, the White House uses it, and loads of uh, administrations around the world use it. And Munich happily moves to uh, Debian. Uh, and, and the company that was doing that apparently had a contract with Microsoft Office. So, so they were trying to derail that. And they almost succeeded. It was said that, you know, Bristol abandons the open source efforts based on, and after loads of investigations, and I, I've been speaking myself personally to some of the investigative journalists and passing them some references and information about it, uh, it, it, I think they came under quite a lot of pressure in the government, and now they move back into like, oh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and consider open source. We apologize. We listen to much of the wrong people thing. So it seems like in the UK, which is one of the worst countries in terms of open source adoption, uh, uh, as far as I know, in Europe, at least it's one of the worst. Uh, is it at least the perhaps, U.S. ain't much better in some cases. <laughs> you, you, well, the U.S. I had this discussion in IRC. Actually, it's still going on as I speak. I see it on the other screen. Uh, there is this discussion with like Canadian people about uh, is the United States worse in terms of Linux adoption in the U.K. And I say, well, Australia is also in a very bad situation in that regard because the government there is like really deep in the pockets of uh, Microsoft. So, so in here. It seems like at least they're willing to like consider some some open source in the government's like website and stuff, and uh, which is good news. And uh, that's that's pretty much all I have to say. So it's kind of like once again you have to learn from experience that Microsoft likes to have its uh, cronies and uh, friends and stuff going around. And uh, from what I can tell, they'll throw fud, they'll throw this information, they'll just look at the cookbook of what what. They have use, though it's not secure, it's too expensive, it's not fragile, it doesn't run Windows application, you know? and they actually go through the list, and you have to go and tackle and just like, you know, use a bat to just shoot them down, because you know they'll try that, but but it doesn't get reported very often, unless you really hard, ask the hard question. Like, you you know it. what, I, I wish I had a million dollars to blow right now, because what I would honestly do for this election cycle, since the money that's being spent by the government is such an issue. I would just point out how much waste there is as a result of not using open source. 
Why not just air those ads? Well, only the companies that make the money are American companies, so it's like Oracle, Google, uh, Microsoft, Apple. But the, the fact is the money there.